Welcome to Cancer and Peace. My name is Sean Stewart, and I'm here to facilitate a conversation with my good friend, Peter Scalzo, who's been on an 18-year cancer journey, and we've had a lot of conversations together. Today, we wanted to kick off uh, our episode with a tribute to one of our guests that were here, and so I'm going to let you uh, share that to start with, and then we'll have some more conversation after that. Okay, thanks, Sean. Yeah, uh, it's really with sadness, but also joy that we recognize our sister Linda, who um, gave her story on this podcast on August 25th, uh, 2023, last year. And I encourage you to listen to her story. Uh, A couple weeks ago, she was hospitalized and she passed. She transitioned and went to go be with the Lord. And so even though we're sad because uh, she was quite involved in the recovery ministry that that we love, and she was a friend to many of our friends, and she was a friend of ours. We're happy that she doesn't have to do that pancreatic cancer journey anymore and that she's with the Lord. So just a special memory of her today. So thanks, Sean. Yeah, definitely worth a listen. That was uh, yes. a great interview, and really yeah. she shared uh, her life in a, mm-hmm. in a deep and meaningful way, and so uh, we both— uh, are uh, sensing and feeling her loss. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting to see her more recently, um, but um, it's definitely a tribute with, with much um, just sadness, but also just a sense of uh, the way that she lived uh, mm-hmm. and shared her life in the, those uh, last several months, uh, deep and meaningful. And so I'm glad she was here for that interview. And I don't think she has any other memorial, so to speak. I Like I don't think she wrote stuff down about her life. Um, I know she gave her testimony in recovery circles, but I think this is the one that was recorded. And so it's really our honor to have it, have this me- memory. Yeah, it was. It was a, to uh, share. Yeah. So we would yeah. encourage you to go check it out. Mm. It's episode 23, if you look at the episode numbers, but it was on August, released August 25th, 2023. Uh-huh. And uh, you'll find it uh, a good episode. And I uh-huh. uh, would love to have guests on here. And, and hers was a great interview. Uh-huh. So uh, from there, we're going to transition yeah. a little bit to uh, what we want to talk about today. Yeah. And uh, we've been we've been involved in something um, called emotionally healthy spirituality, also. Uh-huh. And and this fits into this concept we want to talk about uh, has to do with. Um, something that's called being versus doing. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, that has its own self explanation on it. I think you can understand that, but I think we want to talk about that quite a bit today yeah. um, because it, uh, it's my impression that uh, a cancer journey uh, causes you to have to come in many places of your life to a full stop. Mm. And when you come to a full stop, that can be difficult. Um, and so I think we want to kick back and forth this concept a little bit about being versus doing. Uh-huh. And uh, I think Peter will kick us off probably with examples for himself and his thoughts on this. And I have some examples in my own life of uh, having to wrestle with this concept too. So, yeah. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, I'm going to speak from my perspective, uh, going way back even to my family of origin growing up and really growing up with a performance based philosophy. And what that meant was I based my value as an individual on how well I performed, uh, how much I performed. And so you can imagine even as a child wanting to become a worker, because the message to me was you're, you have value when you're working hard and performing and making money and those sorts of things. And so I carried that philosophy uh, into everything that I did. Uh, including my social life or, you know, including my sports life. It was all about, uh, I had value if I was winning, if I was achieving titles, you know, I became an attorney and, and uh, joined a lot of uh, civic organizations, you know, political and also church and, and really all about am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? Constantly six children, am I providing enough? But it was all about performance. And so that, of course, leached into my whole Christian life, including my church life. It was all about, was I performing well in church? Was I presenting a certain image? Um, And, you know, I 
I made it up to the ranks of being coming an elder, which for me was a big deal at the time, you know, because of performance and titles and basing my my value on that. But I'm going to even boil it down to my personal relationship with Jesus. I mean, I can remember that um, I felt that God was was really looking on me with more favor when I was performing. Mm. Um, and that was doing, quote, Christian things, even though my job as an attorney was really an act of worship to him. I knew that intellectually, but deep down I thought, well, I, I really need to be teaching the Bible, performing, and then I have favor with God. But also in my prayer life, I thought, well, I need to say the right things in my prayer mm -hmm. life. You, you know what I mean? Like even perform in a in a prayer life and like make sure I read through the Bible in a year. I can't tell you how many times I like sped read or whatever the word would be the scriptures just to get through it so i could say hey i got through the scriptures or bible courses or you know earned a degree in bible and it was like yes the bible knowledge was one thing but the perform it was really about performance have i performed enough and so when i was um you know obviously cancer for me was that thing that took me out uh, in 2005, when I was first diagnosed, I had long recoveries. I mean, I had a month in the hospital, usually for major surgery, and then I'd have at least eight weeks of recovery at home. And then I really didn't feel right for about a year. It used to take me about a year to fully recover, but there was a lot of downtime and a lot of time that I couldn't perform. And God was really doing a work in my life about that. Peter, do you still have value even though you can't perform? And, um, and in, my, um, in my 14th surgery where, you know, that was the sea change where I was facing uh, an end of life process, um, that concept really uh, became paramount, you know, well, uh, what kind of value do I have? I'm sitting here in the hospital, I'll probably do an end of life process. I'm just a burden kind of thing. I'm not performing for my kids, for my spouse at that time, nothing. And um, and then we were introduced to emotionally healthy spirituality. You introduced me to it, as a matter of fact, as a program, and it's had such a profound impact on my life. But I remember Pete, Pete Scazzera drew the the circles and he said the the doing circle for most christians is huge what yeah. fits in there and the being circle is this tiny circle and i was like being what do you mean being yeah right and it's like and he was like well you're the circles should be equal i was like being what the heck are yeah. we talking about and i've been a i had been a christian a long time so tell me being versus doing Yes, yeah, so uh, we did the Amway circles with Peter, and <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to do that. Um, well, I love the fact that you mentioned the circles because I, because something that was in my mind was when I talk about this a little bit, it's easy to be defensive and say, "But I have to do." I mean, there's things, I, and and that's right. Like the in life, uh, we don't just set and be and and become, um, you know lazy let's call it that way it's like that this is not a promotion of laziness it's something different than that and i think um you described the two circles so in the being versus doing this is um i'll i'll first put it into a christian biblical context and uh i had this happen to me i think i even told this story but i'm going to tell it again even if we if i said it before in a past podcast but we had a men's retreat here and the first few days went really well. We were on schedule. Uh, everything hit, you know, on the minute it was supposed to, and it was a four day event. And so all three days, um, you know, part of my job was to make sure everything went without a hitch and that it was all running smoothly and, and things were happening the way they were supposed to. And they were day four. Um, we got a snow storm overnight. Um, our primary person who was providing the meals had gone home and uh, so we were kind of improvising a bit for the last morning. And so I had tried to coordinate a little bit with some of the equipment here on property. And I'd asked a few guys to, to go work on getting some food together and, and so forth. So it was a little bit more improvised. And so I came in and 
nobody put on coffee and we had guys showing up in literally two minutes. I'm like, well, let's get some coffee going. You know, it's like, we don't want guys walking in here without like, you don't, for somebody like myself, you have to have coffee when you start the morning. <laughs> so immediately I'm sort of working on uh, getting the coffee ready. And, and I was in this, we got to get this done. We got to get this done mode. And uh, one of my closest friends, he just looks at me. He's like, Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> it was just such a, a great reminder of um, the Mary Martha story. Mm-hmm. And in the story, you have Mary and Martha and uh, Jesus is there visiting them at their house. And he's sharing his life. And Mary sits at the feet of Jesus and she's soaking up the relationship, all that he has to share, listening, paying attention. And Martha is behind the scenes, just working like crazy, trying to make sure everything goes without a hitch, that it's all coming together. And, um, and she comes to Jesus, like, Jesus, could you ask her to help me out here? You know, I was like, this is, yeah, you, know, you can tell, you know, she doesn't say this, not in the bit. It's like, this is ridiculous. You know, I'm in here doing all the work and she's sitting out here doing nothing. You know, what the heck? And Jesus' response is so priceless because he's just like, Mary has chosen the better thing and it won't be taken from her. And that is such a powerful concept, you know, mm-hmm. and I look at the, the men's retreat and I was focused on making everything happen, making it right. And the relationships were right there in the room. And I wasn't focused on them. I wasn't focused on that at all. And so this concept of being, um, it's bigger with God than even with the people around us, but it applies to God and those relationships that are right there in our midst. That is so easy to get caught up with the doing side of, of our life. I think the best way to examine that, there's you can start by examining it, in, um, in how you think about, can you sit still for five minutes? And when you do sit still for five minutes, what bubbles to the surface? Mm. It's a great way just to, it's a quick test. Mm. A five minute test, I guess, if that's quick enough. Um, but the quick test is, if you sit down for five minutes and you say, I just want to sit and feel and relax, your body, things are going to come to the surface. There are all these feelings and emotions. And if the emotion is, Hey, I need to get this done. And you're feeling hurried. You're feeling, um, in some ways, um, the stress or pressure of something. This is in a really good indication that you're stuck in a being mode. And so Peter laid out, Um, and this concept that we do in emotionally healthy spirituality, where you draw two circles and one circle represents how much of your life and time is spent doing. And the other circle represents how much time is spent relaxing and being in the presence of God and others, not in a doing mode of all. And if those two circles are in any way, significantly different, different, then it indicates that you're probably, I, I rarely hear somebody saying my being is much greater than my doing. Uh, it's almost always, um, for, for many reasons. And we'll talk about that. I think before this podcast out, the doing circle is bigger. And then that indicates there's something up there. And so as I started out in the podcast, we, we've talked about a lot in this podcast about wall moments hitting the wall and cancer is a wall moment that invites you to do a journey inward, to take an inward look at who you are and what drives you and what's important. And so part of that journey of invitation is to see and feel whether or not you're a beer or a doer Mm -hmm. and cancer, why it does it is that as what's happened on your journey, Peter is it has brought you to a full stop, like your career stopped. Right. What you were able to provide to your family stopped. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least for a period of time, um, those things were stopped and you were forced to confront that. Mm-hmm. And you could try to cover it up with something else, but the 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 invitation uh, from God, I believe, was to be, to experience being. And so I don't know if that resonates. I'll let you throw some comments back it on does. it. I think 
surgically many times it's meant to stop um, even treatment I had to stop in other words the stopping was I think forced on me um, wasn't necessarily my choice now it's my choice to stop but yeah I didn't understand that back then yeah because I I think our culture is such a performance based doing culture I think it's all about that and you know, I think the Mary Martha story isn't meant to say, hey, we all need to stop everything that we're doing and right. spend time with Jesus. But it's 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 designed to say there should be balance in our lives, especially as God followers yeah. kind of thing. That And so I think for me, the being part is... Um, is, yes, five minutes to see what bubbles up. It's to... It's to become knowledgeable about myself. Like, in other words, I love in recovery, we do a daily inventory. And I do that daily. I explore my emotions daily. And it's part of that being. Um, and we talked about it with silence and solitude last time, uh, that it's this concept of going through a process so I can be with God. I think... I think the thing that I've learned is that um, God delights in me when I'm just being. I don't have to be doing for God to delight me. And I think it's the same thing like my, I have a little granddaughter, Mm -hmm. my first one, Hope. She's a year and three months and she's just a little live wire, but. Yes, she is. Yeah, whether she's sleeping or resting, watching Miss Rachel, which she does, or playing or whatever she's doing, I delight in her. Yes. Even if she's sitting on my lap and just being with me, yes. not doing anything, watching something. My favorite thing at that age yeah. is when they fall asleep on you and they're just yeah. cuddling with you. They don't they're not saying anything. They're just literally, you know, in their humanness, you know, uh just pressed against your body there with their, their the warmth closeness. and snoring and uh, just the closeness is... Uh, and I think that's like a little fraction. It is. I think God shows us through our own parenting and having children, grandchildren, a tiny fraction of his immense love for each one of us, whether we're being or doing. And I believe I'm at the point now where... I feel like my times of being is preparing me more for eternity than anything that I ever have done. I mean, I do stuff because God has given me platforms and ministries to do things, but that unique, intimate time that I have with him is really the guts yeah. of my relationship with God. Yeah, I think that's a good a good something to just a noodle on and to, yeah. to digest a bit. I'm going to throw something into this too is, uh, that fits in with so many people have heard this concept of uh, Sabbath and keeping the Sabbath holy, this, mm. this idea of uh, on the seventh day God rested and that we are, are commanded is this idea. And, um, and I'm not actually as focused on whether it's a command or what it is, but as to what its purpose is. And uh, I love the way Scazzaro talks about this. It's like Sabbath is meant to stop, rest, listen, and delight. Mm -hmm. And it's also to move from being human human doers to being human beings. And uh, this command was given to the Israelis coming out of slavery where all they did was work, 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 work all the time. And they were human doers. And he was like, hey, no, as my children, I actually want you to be human beings. And well, one day a week, I want you to stop and not feel the obligation. Not only not feel it, it should be, you should feel the opposite, that you shouldn't be working on this day. You should be stopping, resting, delighting in your whole household. Everyone around you should be doing this. And it's not a command burden. It is a gift a gift to stop and be a human being, one who has the power just to be, just to sit and rest and delight uh, in presence 
with God and with others. And he set aside an entire day uh, to accomplish that purpose so that we would fully know and understand that. And, you know, in our current modern culture, we've lost human being beings. Um, and it is the way you talked about uh, for yourself. I found myself caught in the same. There's a reason why this happens. And most of the time, I say most, it's not all, but most of the time, what I found for myself and I think uh, the people I talk with is that those who are focused on being human beings are covering for something inside of themselves. And so, and it is, I'm trying to get value because I'm trying to either mm-hmm. cover shame, pain, or, or create value because I don't feel valuable unless I can show that I've created something, I've done something. And, um, it's such an important thing to know that the reason why I'm doing so much is to cover up something as a felt inadequacy. Yeah. If I had the ability to feel the inadequacy yeah, and still yeah. know that I'm valuable, yeah, that's a place of being able to be. Yeah. I, I'm just going to share a quick story because God always has to hit me over the head with a two by four. Yeah. And so I was either in my first or second year of law school and, you know, I'd moved my family down to Virginia to go to law school and I had three kids. At the time, I had the most kids in my class. I didn't have the best grades, but the most kids. (laughs) And um, anyway, I was studying seven days a week and I was studying from a basis of kind of fear and being able to say, hey, I'm studying all the time, performance. It was a pretty intense, rigorous uh, program for me. And I would spend one weekend a month throwing up and I was in a, my body was in a pattern and it was going on and on and on. So I saw a gastroenterologist uh, where I was, he did an an endoscopy on me and he came in the room and he said, um, he he knew my personality and because we had talked and he said, I'm going to make a contract with you right now. We're going to shake on it. And if you agree to this, I'll, I'll remain your, your doc. And I said, okay, what is it? He said, I want you to take off Saturday afternoon through Sunday and not study. And I shook his hand and I started it. Hmm. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, well, this is what God says to do anyway. (laughs) But I was doing what I wanted to do. (laughs) But I did it. And do you know that it took a few months, but the whole gastroenterology stuff stopped with me. Everything calmed down. And I had more quality time with my family, my kids, my wife, and with God. You know, Sunday was a true day of rest. You know what I mean? So I had to be forced to. <laughs> yes. To do so any, good. Yeah. I, re, I reap that that benefit, you know? It reminds me of the book out there, Your Body Keeps the Score. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's happening inside of you, your body is keeping a score and it's affecting so much of your life. And so the encouragement of being a being as opposed to doing is such an important part. Yeah. And again, I don't think we're speaking against doing, but we are uh, looking at, is there a balance of being? And that's the examination piece that's important here. So I very similarly found myself, uh, not with that doctor's story, but I can remember we're both have just got caught up in this performance based environment. And I, found myself, I remember in college, um, I was working, um, outside two jobs and trying to do school full time. And I even played in the band and I slept in class, but I remember falling asleep, you know, um, the weirdest things is I was having, I was working so much. I was probably getting four hours sleep a night, something like that. I fell asleep in the shower and I would wake up hitting myself, you know, hitting the wall of the shower And, but it got to the point where I got so tired, I was hallucinating. And, uh, I remember, I remember one of the last examples of that was, uh, I was working at this convenience store at overnights and I was hallucinating, seeing people walking outside and I was mopping the floor and I fell asleep leaning against this mop. (laughs) I just taken my body to the complete exhaustion point and, and my mind was not able to fully be present or even, you know, function in a way that was healthy and good because I was so into, um, trying to 
in my, in my all my strength and power to make a way. Mm. Um, but, and that's not a healthy place to be. It's a mm. very unhealthy place to be. Mm-hmm. But that performance-based thing was so deep inside of me. But I didn't realize the reason why I needed to perform so much was to cover up deep insecurity. Mm. Um, if I didn't perform, if I didn't make something of myself, um, I felt worthless mm-hmm. without value. And, and it's, this seems odd for a cancer conversation or whatever, but I think, mm-hmm. um, God has to stop us sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, for us to recognize and to recognize. Yeah, this is, feel. I mean, you know, we've said it before that, that we, I, like, I, I don't believe God causes the harm, but I believe he uses what we're going through, what the enemy intends for harm, God intends for good. And this is one of those areas where a cancer journey can be a time of physical suffering, yes, but also a time of reflection, being with God, taking that time. You can't perform your way through a cancer journey. Mm -mm. It happens to you. Yeah. And in fact, I tell, like I have a, my co-leader for my cancer support group just had a very serious surgery Monday for cancer of the gum and, and tongue. And I told her before she went in, I said, patience is the key. It's going to be a long recovery, but God has a purpose in that, you know, for you to be still and patient. And, you know, we want, we're, I, I'm a very impatient person. I want to get up and do stuff. Yeah, and get stuff, but I I have to consciously make a choice. Okay, I'm going to be s- still. <laughs> yeah, be still and know that I'm God. <laughs> yeah, not you, Peter Scalzo, but know that God is there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the verse. <laughs> yeah, certainly. <laughs> I love it. No, I just had those same things that when I first sit down, I will get barraged with all the things I need to do. Yeah, when I first try to do that moment of stillness or time of stillness and silence. Uh, all the things that need to get done have to bubble to the surface and there has to be a conscious letting go. Yeah. All those, okay, Hey, that's good. But I want actually not to invest this time here. I actually want to choose the better thing. Mm-hmm. And I, that has to be a conscious choice to choose the better thing. Mm-hmm. And so there is something conscious that has to be done to be in this. I think few people subconsciously choose being over doing. Uh, most people choose doing because it's something they can control. Yeah. Um, but our emotions were meant to be felt, mm. processed. Yes. And then on the back side of that, it doesn't mean that we were ruled by our emotions. Mm-hmm. It means that we've taken time to recognize that they represent something that needs to be uh, processed and some need to be acted on um, and some need to be released and some need to be uh, a part of a process where we're allowing ourselves to feel and be human. And this, this piece of you can't um, cover up the negative emotions without squashing the positive ones, meaning that uh, you cannot just cover up pain and painful emotions such as sorrow, fear, anger, doubt, uh, without covering up joy and peace. Mm-hmm. You can't do one without squashing the other. And so this is important. And the only way you can do that is to take time to be, mm-hmm. to experience those and to sit with those in front of uh, God, to sit with those with other people mm-hmm. and just be. That's what Sabbath does, is mm-hmm. taking time to be, to experience those. Mm-hmm. And in our current modern hurried up environment, I think um, there's so many things that are trying to move us from that. And God brings us to the wall. Cancer, other major um, things in our lives that we hit these walls. And it's an invitation to become human beings again. Who would have thought cancer is an invitation to be a human being? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? (laughs) Yeah, I think even in my, how much it's, the being concept has revolutionized my personal devotions with God. It used to be how much scripture can I fit in? Now it's two sort of brief 
devotionals and then contemplative reading of the scriptures, like one chapter or a few verses, and then to meditate on them. Because it's not about, I have to get through this scripture in a certain amount of time. It's just, I'm going to just be with God and let him speak to me through mm. these these verses, Devo, and that kind of thing. It's not about me performing. It's about me just being. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah. In our last podcast, um, you know, it'll probably publish uh, prior to this one. It was on Silence and Solitude, and yeah. it is an act of being. And so if you haven't heard that and you're thinking about, well, how, that's a tool you can use for for the being. But I think a great starting place, uh, if you're hearing this and you're wondering and you're wanting just to experience where you're at is, um, one, take time to draw those two circles and be honest with yourself. How much time do I spend in being versus doing? And that'll at least let you kind of have an, a, a starting point of where am I at? Are those two in balance? That's the tension of that imbalance because we're not asking you to not do. We're asking you to think about, uh, do you have balance in your life and the being, doing? And then the next question, a way of assessing is, sit down and take five minutes and allow yourself to feel and see what your body's doing, how you respond to it. Uh, and I would journal it when you're done. Hey, um, immediately... I thought about the laundry, the car, what I'm doing at work, all those things uh, that were invitations to do because they're probably covering up something. If that's the case, if those are the first things that come and they don't go away, those are probably covering. Your doing is probably covering for emotions and feelings and life with God and deep relationship that may be missed. And that's why uh, we call this cancer and peace. To get to peace, you have to go through those doors. Mm. And um, I was an expert at stuffing feelings and emotions and and doing. Yeah, weren't we both? Because we we're both. I didn't have time. Doers, for it. doers, doers. Yeah, doers. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is that concept about it getting buried, it doesn't die, but it just gets buried inside. It comes out. It's going to come out. Yes, that's and um, for me. It was destructive. I think Jerry Scazzaro said it this like unprocessed emotions don't die, they get buried alive. Yeah, and uh, part of being is to experience those emotions as we yes. were talking about. And so, that's such a great, yeah, um, thing to know that you may think that you've avoided and experienced it, but they're just buried, they're there. And if you ever crack that dam, <laughs> uh, you're gonna find there's pressure there, yeah. My experience is the pressure was much greater than I ever realized. And once uh, I cracked the dam of starting to feel some emotions, mm. I had these emotional things that just kept hitting me over and over because uh, there was so much pressure behind the dam wall. Um, and I say that not as a curse word. <laughs> 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 uh, that, you know, they kept spilling out. And then I'd be like, yeah. well, where did that come from? Why did I all of a sudden feel emotion about in the middle of this conversation? Where did it come from? And I started having to ask those questions because unwanted emotions would come to the surface in the middle of conversations, in the middle of speaking. I'd be like, Oh my goodness, where did that come from? I have to feel this. I have to feel this. What is that? Mm -hmm. Because there was so much pressure uh, behind that of mm. unprocessed emotions that had been buried alive. Mm. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for uh, listening. Being versus doing. Being versus doing. Being yeah. a Mary versus being a Martha. Yes. Balance. It's, but it's balanced. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. Yeah, it was and, good. Uh, Thanks. We, uh, we, we love sharing our lives, and uh, Peter's been really awesome at sharing his cancer journey. So uh, but be blessed, everyone. Thank you for yeah. listening. Thank you. Thank you.